Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder, or ARFID for short, is listed under the section Feeding and Eating Disorders in the DSM-5. So how is ARFID diagnosed clinically? There are four criteria that we psychiatrists take into consideration, and these are listed from A to D in the DSM-5. Criterion A states that there is an eating or feeding disturbance that is manifested by persistent failure to meet appropriate nutritional or energy needs. And examples of this could include lack of interest in eating or food, avoidance of certain foods based on their sensory characteristics. So this would include textures, temperature, or taste, or concerns about aversive consequences of eating. And this would include fears of choking or vomiting with eating. The disturbances need to be associated with one or more of the following. One, significant weight loss, failure to achieve expected weight gain, or faltering growth in children. So one way we would track this clinically is through the use of growth charts, where we monitor the developmental trajectory of a child. Growth charts not only tell us how your child is growing compared to other kids the same age and gender, but also show us a pattern of your child's height and weight gain over time. And we use this information to make sure that they're growing appropriately and proportionately. When looking at a growth chart, we would expect to see that a child follows the same curve over time. And a red flag would be when a child's height or weight percentile changes from a pattern that it's been typically following. So if a child's height and weight traditionally followed the 90 to 95th percentile curve, and then suddenly dropped down to the 50th percentile or even lower, that would be very concerning to me as a physician, and we would want to evaluate that further. Two, significant nutritional deficiency. And this is often based on clinical assessment. So assessments of dietary intake, physical examination findings, and lab tests. Three, dependence on enteral feeding, also known as tube feeds, right? Or dependence on nutritional supplements. What we see is that supplementary feeding is required to sustain adequate intake. Four, marked interference with psychosocial functioning. Oftentimes, kids are unable to participate in normal social activities, such as eating with others. Criterion B states that the disturbance is not better explained by lack of available food or by an associated culturally sanctioned practice. It also does not include developmentally normal behaviors, such as picky eating that is commonly seen in toddlers, or reduced intake that's commonly seen in the elderly. Criterion C describes that the eating disturbance does not occur exclusively during the course of anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa. And there is not evidence of a disturbance in the way in which one's body weight or shape is experienced. Lastly, Criterion D notes that the eating disturbance is not attributable to a concurrent medical condition or not better explained by another mental disorder. Also, whenever the diagnosis of ARFID is made, I will make sure to screen for anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, and neurodevelopmental disorders, as those with ARFID are at higher risk of having these conditions. If you have concerns that your child is struggling with these various signs and symptoms, please do not hesitate to reach out to your pediatrician or psychiatrist to get them further evaluated. 